On Wednesday, the Shippensburg women's lacrosse team took on Seton Hill. SUTV's Jack Ainsley has more. On Wednesday, the women's lacrosse team had their home opener against Seton Hill. This was the first game played on the recently renovated turf at David T. Field. The Raiders would struggle early in the first half, surrounding three quick goals. They would respond with two goals of their own to cut the deficit to two. Both teams would score one more goal, and uh, the score at half would be 5-3. to three. In the second half, teams would trade goals again to make the score 7-5. to five. After, C after that, Seton Hill would go on a run and score eight consecutive goals and beat go on to lose by a score of 15-6. to six. For SUTV Sports, I'm Jack Hansen. Lacrosse took on Millersville on Saturday after dropping their season opener to Seton Hill. Senior Elena Cardesi came into Saturday's game only three goals short of becoming the 15th Raider to reach 100 career goals. We pick up in the first half where Cardesi already has two goals through the first 12 minutes of play. Cardesi from the free shot. She scores and gets her 100th career goal to complete the hat trick. Congratulations to her. Shippensburg, they're going to be down 5-4 after that goal. Millersville, they're going to look to respond. They have the ball behind the net. Going to find the Grace Kuba up top. She's going to look for a pass and then cut across with a bunch of speed. She shoots this one. Top corner, a great shot by Grace Kuba. That's going to give Millersville a 7-4 lead. Abby Seesock, she has the ball now. A great spin move, tries to get the defender off of her, looks for a pass. She's going to cut back left again. She finds a spot. She comes straight through, shoots it, bar down, and a great shot by Seesock. That's going to put the Raiders down 7-5. At the end of the half, Grace Kuba is going to score again right as time runs out in the half. Millersville, they're going to end up taking this win 15-11. The Raiders host Westchester on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. The construction at Seth Grove Stadium is finally complete as the football locker rooms are now finished. These locker rooms feature individual stalls for players. Each stall has its own lockbox with USB ports and outlets inside. Players will be comfortable in these new locker rooms until it's time to run down their brand new turf tunnel, which leads right under the bleachers all the way to the field. Hopefully, we'll be able to see the Raiders emerge from these locker rooms in the fall. Baseball face East Stroudsburg in a set of doubleheaders this weekend. The home doubleheader would not bode well for the Raiders as they would fall 13-5 in a game that included 19 walks, 14 wild pitches, and 5 hit batters. Game 2 would be a much closer game that would see Ship lose 3-2. Justin Darden was responsible for the Raiders' two runs with a two-run homer in the bottom of the second. Saturday's doubleheader at ESU would see the Raiders split the games with the Warriors taking game one by a score of eight to, five, eight to one. Shippensburg took game two in a one to nothing shootout. Shippensburg's next matchup is a doubleheader Friday at Shepard. Softball squared off against Bloomsburg on Wednesday after the game was postponed due to poor field conditions. SUTV's Jacob Hintz has the highlights. For the first time in more than a year, Shippensburg softball is back on home turf, squaring off against Bloomsburg in a game postponed from the week before. Bloomsburg torched the Raiders in the top of the seventh, scoring five runs and entered the bottom of the seventh with a comfortable 7-1 lead. Raiders would find a spark, bringing four runs home before the final out, including a Hannah Marsteller two-run homer to bring the final score to 7-5, to Bloomsburg with the win. On to game two, bottom of the third, Taylor Rancevich fires a grounder into right center field, brings in Courtney Coy to put the Raiders on top on nothing. Raider pitching would keep the Raiders ahead with Malin Leber pitching a complete game and coming up with her first collegiate win, 2-1, to one, ship. For SUTV Sports, I'm Jacob Hitz. On Saturday, the Shippensburg softball team would play a doubleheader against East Stroudsburg. The Warriors would come out strong in the top of the first when Caitlin Callen would ground out to first base, which would allow Molly Neese to score and put ESU up one to nothing. The Raiders would respond in the bottom of the second off a sacrifice fly from Hannah Johnson. Radzevic would score and the lead would be cut in half. The fifth, Tony Jones would get a base hit to center fields, which would drive in a run and the Raiders would extend their lead to four to two. The Raiders would go on to win the first game of the doubleheader, 6-5. In the second game, the Raiders would start off with a four-run lead in the first inning. ESU would respond and would take the lead in the fifth with a three-run homer to take the lead 
In the bottom of the fifth, Mars Stellar would send one over the left field fence and the Raiders would regain the lead and go on to win the game 10 to seven. Softball will be back in action Saturday at Shepard. First pitch is at one o'clock. The softball team has been thrown a curveball with a large set of revisions in their upcoming schedule. Softball was set to face Bloomsburg tomorrow, but that game has been postponed to Tuesday, March 23rd. The matchup originally scheduled for the 23rd against this Seton Hill has yet to be rescheduled. Friday's home doubleheader against Shepard has been moved to Sunday at 1 o'clock. The following weekend, we'll see Ship play a pair of doubleheaders against Lockhaven. All that remains up in the air for now is when they will face Seton Hall again. That's it for this week's edition of Sports. I'm Patrick Ramsdale. Be sure to check out our social medias at SUTV News and visit our website at SUTVNews.org. We're back Wednesday with world news and entertainment. Until then, good night.